The topic of this video is TB spine. Tuberculosis is caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium tuberculosis. According to statistics released by the World Health Organization in 2013, South Africa has the third highest rate of TB internationally, behind China and India. 80% of the population has TB, most of which is latent. WHO estimates that we have 450,000 cases of TB per year. This means that 1% of our population has TB. The South African Department of Health estimates that 73% of people who have active TB are infected with HIV as well. When you are exposed to the TB bacilli from an infected person, you breathe it in and become infected. You then develop primary disease where you have active TB. Most people fight off the infection and the TB bacillus sets up a latent infection. This latent infection can lay dormant for many years and most people will never progress to active TB. If you do progress to active TB, you can get pulmonary TB, extrapulmonary TB or both. One of the body sites affected by extrapulmonary TB is the musculoskeletal system. Here, the three main manifestations are spondylitis, osteomyelitis, and arthritis. This video will focus on spondylitis. TB most commonly affects the vertebra between T8 and L3. The infection generally starts in the anterior part of the vertebral body in the region of the disc. It then spreads behind the anterior ligament to involve the adjacent vertebral body. This destruction of the body causes collapse anteriorly. Posterior elements are not involved in TB. You can get an angular deformity of the spine. As only the affected vertebra collapse, the deformity is a short, sharp angle for kyphosis. This angle is called a gibbous. This x-ray depicts erosion of contiguous vertebra accompanied by disc space narrowing. Kyphosis formation may also develop. The infection produces cuts, which can be paravertebral as demonstrated in this MRI. Alternatively, the pus can collect in the spinal column. Neural involvement can occur acutely or with late onset. Late onset paraplegia is often due to vascular thrombosis and infarction, compression as granulation tissue becomes scar tissue, and mechanical pressure. It is imperative to always look for non-contiguous lesions in the spinal cord as well. A South African study showed that 16% of their patients had non-contiguous lesions. Plain radiography of the entire spine or an MRA sagittal cut is mandatory. So clinical presentation depends on the stage of disease, site and presence of neurological deficiencies, abscesses, or sinus tract. The patient often has back pain and a spinal deformity. One third cannot walk due to neurological compromise. Patients may also have constitutional symptoms, such as night sweats, loss of weight, and fever. The examination of a patient should include attention to the detection of sinuses and gait, evaluation of spinal alignment, and an assessment of spinal motion and hips. Meticulous neurological exam is mandatory. Investigations are essential in the diagnosis of spinal TB. These include a lethal site sedimentation rate, which is usually elevated. This can be as high as 73. If it is more than 100, your primary two differential diagnoses are TB and myeloma. A MAN2, which is positive 90% of the time, Weidel and Brucella complement fixation tests. A biopsy should be taken for microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. As there is an increasing differential for spinal TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis has to be confirmed. With CT guided biopsies, there is often a poor yield and a long wait for culture. For histology, a larger core is obtained through percutaneous biopsy under general anesthetic. This is often combined with abscess evacuation. Radiographic imaging should be done of the chest and spine. 50% of chest x-rays have signs of active or old TB. MRI radiology should also be done. Management is divided into medical and surgical. Management is broadly divided into two categories, that is, medical and surgical. Tuberculosis is a curable disease. Adherence to treatment can be improved by stressing this to patients. In the thambocensensis of spinal TB, medical management consists of taking four drugs, methambocin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol for nine months. For convenience and to decrease co-burden, 
these four drugs are available as a single tablet combination drug called RIFA4. Drug doses are individualized by weight to each patient. Patients who have multiple drug resistance, MDR-TB, and extreme drug resistance, XDR-TB, are treated with more aggressive drug therapy for longer periods of time. Drug therapy is then tailored to the specific mutations that the TB bacillus has. Patients are watched taking their drug to improve adherence. This is called the Directly Observed Therapy, or DOT program. No drug is innocuous. The common side effects to watch out for are hepatitis, peripheral neuropathy, and optic neuritis. Rifampicin is also a cytochrome P450 inducer, so dose adjustments of other drugs may be needed. This is particularly important in the South African context, where first-line antiretroviral for the treatment of HIV are metabolized by the liver. Peripheral neuropathy can be managed with vitamin B6 supplementation. Indications for surgery include Diagnosis, as discussed earlier, persistent neurological fallout despite being on treatment, a spinal deformity that includes two bodies, as this can give a poor cosmetic outcome and there is an increased chance of tartspiresis. A large paraspinal abscess may impair drug penetrance and can be drained. Surgery is performed by an orthopedic surgeon. Surgery approaches are either anterior, posterior or both. A combined approach is often used at the junctional areas and where facets or multiple bodies are involved. Debridement, decompression and fusion are the techniques often employed.